What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, Jason here with Teddy, um, back for episode three of the Teddy and JD podcast. It's been a minute. Yeah, been almost, it's, it's been a while. It's been about a month and a half or so. Yeah, about that, about five, six weeks. Yeah. Uh, lots to happen in that time. Um, got an interesting show for you today, I think. Uh, first, obviously, the biggest thing we're gonna we're gonna touch on on uh, on Kobe Bryant passing. Um, you know, a legend of the game. We got to pay our homage, obviously. Um, somebody that meant a, a, a lot to us. Um, and then a, a segment I'm excited about. We got Teddy's uh, mid-season. Mid-season M- Dutch MVP. Yes, sir. Um, coming from 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 somebody who who uh, obviously a former MVP himself. Uh, played a lot of years, so I, I'm really interested to see who's been keeping a close eye on our league, who he feels is uh, the front runners for that. And uh, yeah, talk a little bit about the Dutch league and uh, you know, well, some current events in the NBA, kind of what's going on, how the playoff race is shaping up, and uh, who we're gonna keep an eye on down the stretch. So before we get into it, how you been, bro? Everything been good? Everything been great, man. Started back working out, still getting right, you yes, know. Yes, sir. Getting ready for this big three, so, yeah. you know, I've been good. about yourself? Man, you know, just uh, get grinding through this season. Um, you know, had a tough loss yesterday, which we'll get to, but for the most part, we made the cup final, so I'm pretty happy uh, that we're in a position to get another prize, but... Yeah, congratulations. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. So, uh, all right, here we go, man. Um, obviously, uh, like I said, we haven't done a podcast in a while. So, and in that time, um, the very tragic passing of uh, Kobe Bryant, um, one of the game's greats, mm-hmm. um, a guy that impacted a lot of lives uh, and a lot of basketball players, um, you know, who grew up watching him? Really, really sad. I Man, how, how how did that uh, how did that resonate? How did that make you feel? How did that hit you when it happened? Oh, man, huh? it was it was tough. It was tough, and to still to this day, it's still kind of unbelievable. But you know, first of all, I like to pay my respects to his family and his closest friends because it was a big loss, you know, especially for them, but even just for the world in general, for the basketball world, for the fans. I mean, he was one of the greatest players to ever play the game. You know, one of the hardest workers. So to see him go so young, it was it was hard to take. You know, it was hard to swallow. Still dealing with the aftermath of it, but overall, I think you know everything that's happened since has been. You know, they they gave the memorial, which was which which was great. It was great, it was. Yeah, and it was. Uh, so very well done. Yeah, it it was hard, but you know, getting through it, trying to move past it. You know, the league lost a, a great one to him, but I think you know they, he left it in good hands. So. I agree. I mean, for me, the initial thing, uh, when I first heard about it, I didn't believe it. I thought it was like uh, like a hoax on social media or whatnot. And, uh, you know, I remember I was uh, in the group at, in the, in the team at, we was all like, is this for real? Is this for real? And then you found out once they confirmed it and then all the, the, the major news outlets started reporting it. It like if at first it didn't seem real. It took like a couple of days for it really kind of to sink in, and it was just you know I had just watched uh, the Up and Smoke uh, podcast yeah. with him and with, uh, uh, Stack Five and, uh, Matt, and Matt Barnes. Barnes. Yeah. I was like, man, this yeah, dude Kobe, you, yeah, yeah, he's killing it. Like his retirement was setting up to be maybe greater than his uh, basketball mm-hmm. career, and that that's yeah. hard to do. Um, so, Especially yeah. in the aspect of him because he was such, you know, because of his greatness exactly. on court to actually match that off court, you got to really be on your, you know, you got to be on your P's and Q's. So. Exactly. He was a special uh, special human being, man. And, um, you know, I was telling you this earlier. Uh, earlier in my life, in my mid-20s, you know, when, when, when uh, Brown was really st- coming into his own in the NBA, you know, Kobe was that guy. Kobe was, you know, uh, coming off a championship with the Celtics and, you know, uh, around 2008, 2009 mm-hmm. uh, uh, time. And, you know, I was just getting overseas. I was three years into my career, three or four years or whatnot. And I remember uh, how we would, you know, argue or discuss basketball on the back of the bus. At that time, it was, you know, LeBron's better than Kobe or he going to be better than Kobe and this and that. And it was... 
every barber shop, every every debate was, was about that. And, and uh, you know, I, as you know, I'm a huge LeBron fan, so I was, you know, a LeBron guy. But I remember in 2009 um, when they beat the Magic, that was the year that everybody was hoping that Cleveland matched up would would have ma- matched up with Kobe and them in the finals so we could all see they had the Nike commercial <laughs> yeah with the like the pin with, with the, the dolls, dolls. yeah yeah you that's know one of my like, favorite commercials too by all the way. time one of the best one of the best <laughs> of all time and uh you know uh the magic you gotta hand it to them they unexpectedly uh beat the Cavs that year in the Eastern Conference Finals uh with Hito Turglu mm, and uh, Dwight Howard great and year, Rashard yeah. Lewis yeah. and you know those guys and uh, Jameer yeah, Nelson, yeah. and uh, it was unexpected. But you know, I, it, it was I was really, really hoping to see that uh, that year. But I just remember, you know, teammates. We would argue for you know hours over this stuff, and it never really quite ended. But uh, you know, Kobe obviously five championships, uh, twenty years with the same team, dropped sixty one in his last game. Yeah. Uh, this guy is one of the best ever. Um, but the biggest thing for me, I think, also like when you, what you saw from his death, which kind of resonated with me the most on on his greatness. How many people across the world this man impacted through his gift? Yeah, uh, in a, in a positive way or just you know. Uh, people who really aren't even basketball fans knew who Kobe Bryant was. You know what I mean? And to me, you can't put a, 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 a price on that or a, a monetary value or anything. Like, uh, through his gift, through the game he loved and how well he played it, he touched a lot of people yeah. across the world. And uh, for that, you know, championships now obviously – uh, what he did on the court was 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 amazing, but I think it, we as humans, that's you know, you really touch people when you do when you when you do something so well, and that uh, that was that was really really amazing uh, to see that. Yeah, and I, you know, one thing I didn't touch on was like he had that old school mentality of you know now the generations from generation to generation, the mentality of the players are kind of sh- kind of shifting where you know the game is uh. Um, a little bit more, I don't want, it is a little softer, but th- that's not based off players. That's just the, how the league's moving the toward changes, often, yeah. yeah. But, you know, players have less of a, uh, a killer mentality. Like, you know, they're more friendlier, just on court, more, you know, just kind of like, um, like let's say, you know, right now LeBron's the greatest player, in the, the best player in the league, and that's where everybody kind of, that's the standard of basketball right now where, the way he carries himself is almost like the opposite of, you know, Kobe Bryant. So that's kind of how the the generation is after moving. him is yeah. coming, coming yeah. in. Yeah. It's kind of like you know everybody's friendly. Yeah, yeah, exchanging like exchanging you know, jerseys. Yeah, which is it, it's, it's cool. Not, yeah. Uh, yeah, but but that's, I get what that's, you're saying. Yeah. I get what you're saying. You know, that was like uh, I get what you're saying. The almost like the last of the dying breed. You know, right. um, it's kind of like you know the the new era is here and and that's where we at with it. So. You know, I grew up behind that, and that, that was kind of my mentality as a player. So, again, I think most of the, the older generation kind of, you know, um, we kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Because we grew up on them, we kind of can relate to his style of play because that was our mentality growing right. up. So, right. again, it was hard to see him go. And, um, you know, like I said, he was one of the greatest of all time. So, yeah, that, I think. It was only right we play pay tribute to everything he's done in his career. So most definitely, yeah, um, I agree. Rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. You yeah. will be missed. R.I.P. Kobe. We love you, man. So now that brings us to uh, mid-season MVP. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, you know. Teddy's picks. Hey, listen, zero, I'm gonna tell you though, you know, it was, it was, this this was kind of difficult. It was it was this was a hard selection too, FYI. Why is that? I mean, it's just man, it's the season, the, the teams, the way players been playing. It's just a lot of inconsistency. So it was kind of hard to make my picks, but I'm gonna run them past you. You know, you 
Give me a little feedback. Tell me what you think, who I left off the list, you know. Yes, sir. All right, I'm going to start with, we got Donor. I got Dante, your teammate Dante Tom, Thomas, and Carrington Love. Those are my first two. Then I got Elijah Wilson from Denbosch and Noah Dahl Dahlman from Zwola. And then I got the Walker. I don't know his first I forgot to get his first name. Sherrod Dorsey. Nope. The other one. The new, the new one. Oh. He was my sleeper. See, I got him at the bottom. We only had four. We only had four. We only had the top four in our MVP. So your top four is Dante, Dante. Carrington, Wilson, and Noah Dahlman. Yeah. And Walker. That, that was my top outside. four. As I was researching, though, to be honest, I seen his numbers. At the, his numbers are actually the best numbers. Who are we talking about? Walker. His Walker. Number is he got the best numbers. Of of everybody. Really? Yeah. That's I didn't, surprising. I exactly. wouldn't have guessed that either. Exactly. So when I was running through, I was, you know, I was thinking because, you know, like I said, the league kind of been up and down. And, you know, we got players who, of course, you always going to have players in every league that, that's got numbers. But the team don't, the team don't do well. So it's kind of hard to stick them in the running. But, Again, he was on the one of the top teams, and his numbers are phenomenal, actually. And it's, what, his first year in his league, so. He did have a game with 39 against, uh, he had 11 threes. Man, he got the, some, In lighting, too. Listen, he got some, his, his line is fantastic, actually, listen. to be honest. His stat line, he averaged 17 points. He only played 25 minutes. Martez Walker. Martez. That's Martez, right. you know what? Forgive me for, for, for not <laughs> being able to remember your first name, man. I'm, I'm going to show you my – give some apologies to that. But his field goal percentage is at 60%. Shoots the free throw at 83%. He's getting three rebounds a game, three-point percentage. I think he's maybe the highest or the second highest in the league with 51%. From and three? He, from three. Wow. And he shot right at like 100 a hundred three, so That's he's impressive. shooting it at a, a high clip. That's really again. Impressive. So to me, he's having a a great year. He's on the top team. So if I had to choose one, because I didn't I didn't go in no order. I just kind of was just you know throwing them down on the paper just to get them on paper. But if I had to choose a one, even though he was my last the last guy I looked up, I would really say him at with those numbers. You gonna put him in your top four now? You making a, you making a change? Yeah, I gotta make a change. Ooh. He 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 gotta be in my four. Okay. Like he has to be in my four because he got the best. His stat line is he played the least minutes. Okay, Elijah Wilson playing twenty five minutes a game. That's pretty. So that's also again, what's he, he doing in his twenty five minutes? In his twenty five minutes, he averaging sixteen points, one assist. Well, he's shooting 46 from the field goal, 91 from free throw free throw percentage, three rebounds, 42 from three, which, again, he's one of the top three-point shooters in the league also. So, yeah. yeah a lot I mean, of attempts, too. Huh? Yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of attempts. So, he, he has decent numbers, but, again, he, he's his team placing is behind Zwola. So, that's another reason, you know, again, team, the team, where you stand, where you stand at in the league, has to play a part in it too. So sure. especially again, in our league. Yeah. You so, gotta be on the winning. I mean again, tell me what you think, you know. Like I said, you know, you 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 play in the league. I'm just watching from outside looking in. Right. I mean if you, uh obviously Dante and C and like with our position, I'd say that those two have been um our best, most consistent guys throughout mm -hmm. the year. And uh, you know, Carrington is a big part of like you know what we do as far as uh, the engine of our yeah. team, so to speak. Um, Elijah Wilson, I think, is a really good player too. A good scorer. Um, you know, he can score in a variety of ways. Uh, you mentioned Noah Dalman. Uh, he's just he, first, yeah. He he puts up numbers, but he's a winner. Yeah. Like the way he plays, he does a lot of winning things, whether yeah. it be rebounding, timely rebounds, big shots. Diving um, for loose balls. Yeah, he's he's great in the post. Uh, he can pass. He, yeah. you know, um, and you mentioned Martez Walker. He's been, he's having he's having a great year too. Uh, he, he's lethal in transition. Can shoot the three. Yeah. Um, and also is a is a good slasher. And uh, you know, I like I like the way he uh, he doesn't really force. It. He gets a lot of his stuff within the system, which is what good players on winning teams do. Um, 
the the only other guy that maybe would be in the mix for to me would be another guy as well would be Sharon Dorsey Walker. And you know that was that was gonna be my my last when I decided to look at when I was going through as well as the roster, I was looking at, you know, guys if you know, if this guy wasn't playing, like how would the team perform, you know, right. like, you know, and, and I thought about him because he's he's important too to the team. But when I seen when I seen Martez's Martez, numbers, yeah, it's hard to yeah. Like I, I compare that. him like Dorsey and Martel numbers, like Martel numbers was just so like, you know, the the, the difference was so big that, you know, I, I figured like it's hard if you take that amount of scoring from from that team to win without him, you know. Exactly. And then with that that kind of efficiency from the three point line, which keeps the floor open, you know, and they yeah. got two of them because Sharon's a great shooter too. Uh, yeah, I didn't remember yeah. his name. Yeah. Also, sh- shout out to uh, Advanced Pro Basketball. Uh, that's where you got yeah. these numbers, right? Yeah, that's where we got the stats from. Yeah, thanks for the. We're gonna send our a man, shout- our May Duran. He uh, let us let us use um, uh, their, their website to kind of gather uh, information. Or Teddy gather these gather these stats on his picks, but um. As I was saying, like, the thing with Sharon, like, uh, Dorsey Walker for Zwolle, whom yeah. probably the other guy I would put in there, uh, his impact on the defensive side, end, yeah. yeah. And like I said, I didn't look at yeah. I don't have any numbers in front of me or anything like that, but yeah. just my experience playing with him. He, he can guard multiple positions. He can guard uh, point guards well. If somebody's scoring on the wing, they'll throw him on, yeah. on that player. Yeah. Um, so, you know, he's like a two – and Martez Walker, I think he's a good defender too. Um, but they're, they're two-way guys. So, yeah, it's tough uh, and, and even to say like, you could add, add them in there. And if Leiden was having a better year, I would say – when I say better year, I think they have eight losses now. Yeah, they're in like fifth, fifth place. Fifth place, and I feel like they're – in my – with the talent they have, I feel like they're kind of underachieving. So – Otherwise, you know, Parsons, uh, Worthy, obviously, every year. Is in yeah, that type Williams. Of conversation. Yeah, Jarvis. Jarvis Williams, yeah. too. They have some some candidates. But you you never know how the, the year is going to shake out. Uh, we, there's still a lot of games to be played. So the standings could. That's why they're midseason picks. But So tell me, though, we named six guys. Six guys. So you got to narrow that down to your four. I want to hear your four. My four would be at one. I put Martell at one, Dante at two. Um, Noah, Dominic at three, and Carrington at four. That 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 would be how I would round it out. That would be my four. And again, the thing about Carrington is like, you know, we didn't mention his numbers, but he's one of the league leaders in in assists and steals. So he he got an impact on both he, sides of the ball. He gets after it. Yeah. So that that make a huge difference. So that's the thing, you know, he, he's doing something on both sides of the ball. And again, he he plays a bulk of the minutes, so that shows his importance to the team. Yeah, so I I would I would leave out Elijah just based off of that alone. I, I'm not saying he's not a two way guy, but I'm I'm looking at the records to the team. Zola and uh, and Don are the top teams in the league, and to be honest, just looking at the numbers, those guys have you know their numbers are are, are better are, are a little better than Elijah. Uh, like like you said, uh, who if you were to take somebody off of a team, uh, like I said, Carrington sets the table for a lot of guys on our team. Even when he's not scoring, his impact is being felt, uh, you know, setting people up or, or collapsing the defense yeah. or doing, doing – we, we, we put the ball in his hands a lot and uh, trust him and uh, depend on him to generate a lot of offense. But also uh, what you met, uh, said with, with Dante, the, the thing about Dante is his consistency all year um, – is is uh, like I said, I think he's probably been our most consistent guy. <laughs> yeah, and he's somebody you could dump the ball in. He can go create his own shot. He's also a willing passer. Um, 
and uh, and he and he's uh, he works a lot on his shot. His shot's been improving. He's been knocking down some threes uh, um, as well. So he he's definitely uh, an important part to what we do too. And you know, um, and to, to the to to both of those those teams with the way the system is set up for both of those teams, those are important positions on those teams. The for point sure. guard, because you know. Um, and Eric Brawl's offense, the one and the four, uh, are yeah. probably the most important yeah. position. Yeah, and we both know that from experience, but also exactly. you see it in the play. You yeah. know, uh, you know, if those two guys are playing well from those positions, then the, the offense flows a, a, a whole a lot, lot better. better. That's, yeah. that's for sure. And, you know, Zwolle, they've been, obviously, won the championship last year, but the, uh, Martez Walker wasn't there, but Sharon, who we mentioned mm-hmm. earlier, didn't make it top four, but... Sharon Dorsey Walker and uh, Noah Dahman were two main guys uh, and still are two main guys in the success that, that they're having this year. They're uh, second. They may be first now after we lost yesterday. But um, So I, ca- I can't say I, I can't argue with them picks, bro. Yeah. Can't argue with them picks. Yeah, like you said, no disrespect to the guys from, uh, like I said, there were some guys who had some, some really great numbers like um, Taylor, Taylor, he has from light of his numbers are, are great for his um, points, assists. You know, he's averaging right at like eight or nine assists. Like it's, that's that's really good in, in in any European league because of the way they do assists. You know, probably in an American league that'll pan out to be like twelve or thirteen assists. Yeah, it was so, forty-eight minute game. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I mean, again, he has great numbers. Jarvis has really great stats, but the team not really. They underachieving right now, so I kind of left them off of the four. But if we had a 10, they would definitely make it. So, again, no disrespect to none of the players, but, you know, these two, these four guys are playing on the top teams. Their teams are, are really contenders for competing for this title, and they just, you know, right now they're, they're the strongest of the teams, and that's kind of how – Kind of narrow the MVPs down. Their mid-season picks for a reason, like we said, a lot could change. Yeah. And uh, speak, speaking of the Dutch league, man, this, this is a uh, this has been a wild year. Oh, this is uh, I mean, we lost la- uh, last night uh, in Rotterdam, which was unexpected. But you know, you got to hand it to Rotterdam. They played they played great. Um, I look at the numbers though. Uh, we you know we shot six to thirty from three. Uh, had 16 turnovers and we shot 14 of 31, I believe it was from two. It's around 44%. It's hard to win a game like that and uh, missing shots and turning the ball over. So we had a lot of empty possessions. But you also have to give credit to uh, Rotterdam because I thought they played a really good game. But there's just been a lot of upsets. Uh, and, and yeah, like and, and not just like this is over the last month and a half or two months. Like it's been a lot of inconsistent play from just in the league in general, from top to bottom. I mean, you I know, agree. you've seen top teams beat, lose to bottom teams. Like, I think this year it seemed like it's happening a little bit more more often than, than, than the last two or three years. I mean, it seemed like it's going on more, but I think that's also due to, you know, the league has kind of went toward um, bringing young guys in who are not as uh, experienced with, you know, still searching to find their way. And the veterans, normally you have more veterans on the team, which you got to kind of try to balance it. You I got agree. more when you bring in young guys, a little, le- little not so much experience. So the, the IQ is not there where, where you have older guys where, you know, maybe it's about injuries and not being able to sustain for a longer period of time. So... I think that the league is just, to me, watching from the outside looking in, it just looked like the IQ, the level of smartness is down to just the game in general, just a lot of Sloppy bad play. basketball. Yeah, yeah, play. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, for whatever yeah. reasons. I mean, you know, like I said, I'm giving, and just from looking at it again, it's a young league right now where, you know, you got talent, but the players are still learning. So I think from that, you're seeing inconsistent play, and that's kind of how how I view it. But again, you know, top team lighter lost the didn't held the you guys lost last night to to Rotterdam. So I mean, but again, 
Rotterdam is not even a bottom team. They just had a bad stint right there at a certain point. They, they got were some one talent. Of the, yeah. For sure. They were one of the top teams. They you know, so they were fourth for a long time. I don't yeah. know if they are again now, but uh yeah, what you have the standards right there. What what are the standards? Cause I was well as playing light in the day, so that'll have an impact. But with our loss, uh we are tied. We're Donar's first. We have Zwolle second, then Bosch third, Rotterdam fourth, Leiden's in fifth. We're in sixth, which is hey, like I said, I mentioned them. Uh, I think it was yeah, the last, last episode. Yeah, they, they They're doing good, some good things. They they upset uh, Den Bosch in Den Bosch yeah. a couple weeks ago. That was an impressive win for them. Then, like you said, Den Helder seventh, and the last possible playoff spot right now is for Leia Warden. And you have Amsterdam ninth. Um, Leia Warden's coming on too. Uh, yeah. They they beat Leiden uh, at their place. Um, I'm not sure if Craig Osaki Wawan uh, got injured recently, but he was co- he's playing great basketball. I like their point guard and uh, the wing that they have. Um, and I just think they they play really well together. Solid basketball, um, but. Uh, yeah, these standings, the, the, there's there's not a lot of games separating teams either. Yeah, um, and, I, and, I, and and now with the league, with there, with so much inconsistent basketball, of course it's it's also about you know how at a certain time you want to be playing a certain way before you head into the playoffs. Exactly peaking. Well, with that being said, since it's so inconsistent, I think home court advantage is really important. I agree. Uh, that having that six man, the crowd with you can make a difference in between winning and losing a title. So I think yeah, for sure. You know, it's important to try and grab that home spot between you guys and and Zola and then Bosch. It's gonna be real important who 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 ends at who ends at the top right there because again, being a the home team can make a difference in how far you go in the playoffs. And here's the thing too, if things stay stay the way they are and you have Leiden as a fifth seed that's a dangerous fifth seed. I mean, it is. They they are ain't nobody questioning their talent. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, seeing them up close and like I said, uh, a lot of these things. Teddy watches multiple games a week uh, in our league. Uh, goes to you know lives in Den Helder, been to a couple of Den Helder games, so seeing a lot of teams up close. Um, so it's nice to have your perspective on this too. You know, somebody. Uh, with playing experience, who's played at a high level, has success, and then like what you're seeing, you know what I mean, and like the, what you mentioned with the the inconsistent play, and kind of like, I am the word I would kind of use is like you see immature basketball at times, if that makes, sense. and uh, you get that, you know, from like you said, there's less vets, so um, you get a lot of sometimes not as mature, or you see a lot of inconsistencies and up and downs. In, uh, in the level of play. And normally, you in, in our league, you usually have like one or two teams that are just straight up dominating. And nine times out of ten, it's because they play the right that way consistently. consistently. Yeah, on a consistent basis. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, I think that, yeah, you could, I think you're right. I think that's why you see uh, a lot of ups and downs this year. Um, so. You know, as a fan, I think it makes it exciting. Like we mentioned that before in uh, yeah, previous episodes. Yeah, as a player, it can make you rattled. Yeah, yeah. It can, and <laughs> Go coaches, coaches, it can make them crazy. I'm sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, it is. It's it's shaping up to be a nice, uh, nice, nice race. little stretch run down the stretch. And um, you know, me as a player, like I obviously always try to focus on self at first, so keep myself ready in shape and just keep trying to improve and get better and then like yeah. uh, that's kind of got to be the mindset of our team and I'm sure that's the mindset of, of every team around this uh, this time of the year you want to be playing your best coming down the stretch so yeah, absolutely um, you know one win you can't put too much weight on it but a, a loss you can't you can't either right now you have to keep pushing and keep moving forward and, and just keep working and then you know, hope it hope it works out. Anything else you want to touch on? You seen with the league? Uh, no, nah, I mean, like I said, you know, we kind of hit it all right there in that little span. But you know, it 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 makes for you know good viewership. Like you know, watching it 
but at the same time, I like to watch good basketball. Pro, so, pro, at, yeah. so at times, as a basketball know, purist, yeah, me, like yourself, yeah. I get you. At times, it's it's it's, it's hard to watch, you know. So. <laughs> yeah. But again, that that's just a part of the game. You don't. I mean, okay, most players, coaches, you want to win every game, you know. And it's basketball, so top teams do lose to bottom teams in every league. At For some sure. point, it happens. You know, it's also a way to um, reset, kind of wake up call, yeah, type wake of up call to to, to, to kind of get your mental back together. So, you know, it's not like something's new going on, but just that was my broad opinion on just the basis of the overall basis of the league. So I hear you. Now on to the league. On to the NBA. Yes, sir. Um, things heating up, Teddy. Uh, it's coming down. I think we what. 20 games left. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot, a lot, a lot has happened um, in the last six weeks uh, since we played. I know I mentioned last time I was I was thinking uh, New Orleans might sneak in there. Yeah, I was I was about to mention that. How you feeling about that? You still Zion's been as good as advertised. Absolutely. Um, Better actually. Right. Better than advertised. He he he's got a lot of things that he can improve on within his game, but like just a straight size and athleticism has created problems yeah. that a lot of people weren't sure that he he would be able to score like he like he has been in the in the NBA. Uh I think the the, the Pelicans are four games back right now cuz yeah. Memphis lost the other night and they beat the Heat. But let's let's run down the standings. So in the East you got the Bucks 1, Raptors 2, Boston 3, Miami 4, Pacers 5, Sixers 6. Uh, the Nets seven and Kenny Atkinson just stepped down, mm-hmm. and the Magic in the A spot. Um, out west you got the Lake Show first, Clippers second. They play tonight, by the way. Mm-hmm. Excited uh, about that too. Yes, sir. Me too. I'll be be on the couch, posted. Nuggets third. They lost to Cleveland last night. Utah fourth. Rockets fifth, and they lost to. Uh, to the Hornets last night, OKC 6th, Mavs 7th, Memphis 8th. We were talking about Luka earlier, too. Yeah. Mavs look good. That boy Porzingis rounded in the, in the form. Yeah, he yeah. You know what? That, that Mavs got that, you know, um, Luka still got that thumb injury, too. So yes. it's going to see how that's going to play out, going to be important, How whether he's going to be able to. Just keep playing at that high level with that type of injury. Is it on his shooting hand or is it? The I think hand? it is his shooting hand. Yeah, I, I think that. it is too. But he looked good the other night against uh, the Pelicans. Yeah. Triple dub with thirty. I think he had thirty, seventeen, and ten. Uh, he he's a. I I I still maintain. I said it, uh, in the last podcast. They're my my dark horse uh, pick out West because. I feel like in a series, man, if those two, the way Luka can control a game mm-hmm. and, his, and, and as many aspects of the game that Porzingis can affect, both offensively and defensively, particularly defensively with his shot blocking, and now he's shot making, uh, those two as a tandem, they be, they're going to be a tough out in a seven-game series. Yeah, Lil Curry been playing hey, well he, too. Yes, he has been. That's he's been he, killing lately. When Luca was out, he played super well. Like he, I think he he done came into his own. Like I think you know, like he he hashing out his own to where I think when his contract ends, he he might be a starter somewhere. Like I think he he's playing that kind of basketball now, where like you know he can possibly start the way he kind of leading the team, contributing more as a starter and less, not looked at so much like a role player. He's been shooting that thing Man. at a high clip. Must be in the blood of the jeans or something. He, whoo. He, 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 he letting that thing go. But, you know, they got a lot of weapons and uh, Rick Carlisle is a good coach. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, he, 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 he can take things away from you in during the course of a series and uh they can be a tough out. Yeah. Um how you feel about the Rockets small ball experiment? Uh I think it, the problem with that is it just don't it don't got no consistency. I mean they can beat anybody but they can lose anybody. Like, you know, last night they they 
they played against um, Charlotte. Charlotte and, you know, watching the game, they, okay, well, that was with Westbrook was out, though, so it wasn't the, the full team and Gordon was out. But watching them play last night, they just weren't themselves. Uh, maybe because Charlotte do got mobile bigs who can guard, you know, who can move their feet, but they didn't look like themselves, but they were a little short-handed. But, I, I mean, I don't know how well to do going to the playoffs. Regular season is a different different animal. The game is less physical, so it's going to be interesting to see, but I don't know if they'll be able to get over the hump with the small ball. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't I didn't think that they had a realistic shot at winning uh, big in the playoffs anyway. Um, but it's it's going to, to me, it's going to come down to the same thing. Obviously, if Russell Westbrook plays like he did in January and February, just let me run down, like, in the month of January, Russ was averaging 32.5 points, 8.3 rebounds, 8.2 assists, and he followed that up in February in eight games with 33.4 points, 7.3 rebounds, and 6 assists. And that's when they were went on that little win streak. Mm-hmm. Now, he was just abusing people at the rim because obviously yeah. they was putting bigs on because they were they was playing small or they were trying to exploit those matchups. But, you know, the first two games uh, this month, he's he's experienced a significant drop-off in, in points, uh, particularly he's at 26.5 through two games in, uh, in March. But, you know, I'm still looking at, at James Harden, right? Obviously an unbelievable talent, unbelievable player, but – if he is not shot making, I don't see how they could win in a series. Like, you know, against the Clippers the other night, the Clippers destroyed them. Is it but is it his shot making or the team shot making? I think it starts with him. All right. Because he has the ball in his hands so much and he is playing right. a lot of ISO, you know, and he's shooting a lot of stuff off the dribble. Like you said, Westbrook didn't play last night, but when Westbrook has it going, you know, that takes pressure off him and he's taking less attempts, but we all we both know in the playoffs he's gonna have the ball in his hands a lot. And he's gonna the type of shots that he shoots are the type of shots that he makes to get him to be the league's leading scorer. Mm-hmm. And then we've seen over in the years past in the playoffs, when those shots aren't going in and then you fact the collectively for the Rockets them threes ain't going in, they just don't have a chance. So it's like I don't think they're not producing the type of threes or like like the Warriors were producing during their their playoff. Obviously, Steph off the dribble a lot and, and Clay too, but they were producing some movement, ball yeah. movement, player movement, catch and shoot threes off yeah. of you stagnant, know, pass, stag, pass, stag, stag, stag screen. You know, yeah. one more pass, extra pass off the help type stuff. Those are different types of threes, and all the majority of your threes coming off the dribble, uh, contested variety. So, I don't see them them having a a chance i honestly think it's going to come down in the west to the lakers and the clippers um i thought the lakers had a solid win the other night against the bucks lebron's been playing unbelievable since the break absolutely um i like that head-to-head matchup you know it was a lot of fun to watch him and him and the greek freak the other night going at it but also uh him and zion played twice in the last what two weeks yeah Highly entertaining games, but you know, Bron, uh, he, he, he's been on one, Teddy. I and, see. Uh, but everybody wants to see what he does tonight. So, when, whenever, when, when, when anybody listens to this tomorrow or whatever, <laughs> we're gonna have the results. So, I mean, we'll see. Uh, let me tell you, I want to talk about Houston a little bit. Like, I, I see where they're trying to go with small ball, but it's two things right there. With, with small ball, I ain't saying they can't get over the hump, but to me, there's no different from what they're really trying to do when they had Capella than what they're trying to do with Westbrook. Westbrook getting inside the paint, getting high percentage shots. That's what Capella was doing for them. Well, without Capella and Westbrook, now, I mean, like talking about last night's game, you can see like they didn't have nobody else to get inside the paint. So they didn't really get a lot of paint points. And if they can't get paint points, like, if Harden not getting to the rack and he's not getting free throws, you know, they didn't get a lot of calls, he didn't shoot a lot of free throws, then it's just, it's mainly just it's all, tough. it's all jump shots at that yeah, point. It's, it's just, tough. are they making shots? Then they, you know, are they creating good looks or are they all contested? So, 
I think that, you know, I can see what they're trying to do, but without Westbrook, it, it, it's not the, you know, Harden's impact to the game alone when they're stopping his penetration, his jump shot. They're more, you know, like you said, they're off the dribble, a lot of, you know, contested shots, which are t- the toughest shots to make. So I think that if they got to play like that in a series and without Westbrook, it'll be hard. But if Westbrook can stay getting in the paint and Harden can – Normally hardens in the paint too a lot with his with drawing fouls. If they can do that, then I think they can at least make make it a series with no matter who they play. I just you know again, but if they not getting those those them 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 layups that Capella was bringing and Westbrook again, then it's gonna be harder for them to win. Like last night, they didn't really get a lot of a paint points. There was just a lot of jump shot shooting. That makes so. it almost impossible to win, bro. Like, yeah. you know, it, it's well, like, like you it, said. Like, they'll have to have, he'll have to have one of the greatest postseason performances ever shooting-wise. For sure. For them to get over the hump. Shot making. And that's yeah. tough, bro. Like, you're playing every other day. Teams can key in on you because they not have, they don't have to worry about who they playing tomorrow night or the night after. It's only you against that other team. That's why you got to win Harden. four games. So, I, you know, like I said, if Harden could, if if he shot makes at a level basically that we've never seen before, then they got a chance. Yeah, but, but I don't I'm saying, see I that think with bro. with Westbrook though, Harden gets more that. easier looks. Last night he for sure, looks. for sure. Like, no, I know, agree. Westbrook attacking, he penetrates, he kicks it out, then the ball moves. The ball moves better with Westbrook. Because he's attacking, he's getting that out. rim, yeah. bro. And you gotta respect that. So he he's demanding a lot of attention, which takes pressure off of of Harden. So sure. I can even like with the trade for Chris Paul. At first, when I was, when it first happened, I didn't like it as much. But now I think it it was a great move. Now, if you think about it, because when Harden goes out, Westbrook can carry that load a little bit better than Chris Paul did. Their Agreed. their games are similar. He he attacks the basket more. They can get paint points. Okay, Chris Paul probably was going more to the role of Capella when he was in and Harden was out. But they have the, their style of play when one is out and the other one's in. Like, James got tired the last two years, I felt like. And he just couldn't get over the hump due to fatigue. Right. And I think this year with Westbrook, due to his engine never, ever burning out, seemingly. Right. Like, he doesn't seem to get tired often. I think that'll if they have a chance. This is probably from season to season. All right, last year they got right. a little better. Like this year, I think again they only lost last year by it could have went either way. They could have easily been in the finals so. for sure. But that last thing I'll say about the Rockets, uh, Westbrook's run coincided with the trade of Capella, and that opened up the floor, which which unlocked him. Yeah, because the lane was so, so open. open. Yeah, but now it's like, how do you get the best of them both? And in a playoff series, you know, I just, I think the only, unless Harden's getting to the line, and they're calling the same type of fouls that they call in a regular season, because then you can negate the paint points if yeah. he's getting to the line, or if they're getting to the line as a team. But if he is not shot making with the types of shots he's shooting at a high clip, it's going to be tough for them. To me, in a series. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Does Memphis keep this A spot? Uh, yeah, I think they'll be able to Ooh. hold it. Um, but um, who we got over there? Portland, Sack. Sack is playing really good basketball. They, they are. They're they making a strong push. But making me look like it. I, I, don't, I don't think Memphis going to – not that Sack won't continue to win. I just think Memphis is going to continue to win, too. They play really good basketball as a team. It's only a few games left, so they got twenty it, now. They're coming off it. a bad loss in, in Dallas, but you're right. They did beat the Lakers the other night. Um Did they play last night? They played two nights ago. They got smacked by the Mavs in Dallas. But uh going back to touching on Sacramento a little bit, I mentioned in the previous podcast, I'm I'm a huge Harrison Barnes fan. And so I've been watching every game of his career, meaning I was watching the the, Man, the the Kings all year, and they were hard to watch. But ever since, uh, I got to give Luke Wall some credit. I bashed him last episode. <laughs> I love his X's and O's. I said that before. But uh, ever since, excuse me, he put Buddy Heald in the in coming off See, the bench. Yeah. 
that changed things because you got a bona fide scorer coming off the bench similar to something like what the Clippers have in Lou Williams. I'm not saying he's as good as Lou, but, I mean, you know, this is a 20, 20 a game, uh, 20 points per game uh, a night yeah. player coming off the bench. Yeah. And he's his production is maintained – uh, or he's maintained his production and the starting five I feel like there's more fluidity uh, De'Aaron Fox you know is the main guy within that starting lineup now there's no friction really yeah. uh, so they're, they're playing well I feel like Portland got derailed by Dame's injury and they had a tough loss the other night in uh, Phoenix Yeah. and then they had to come back last night and they just got smacked at home by Sacramento but um, I'm, I, I don't See, they just had too many injuries this year. Yeah, Sacramento and New Orleans are playing some great basketball right now. I agree. And Sacramento, you know, we talk about when we were talking about the Dutch League, we talk about inconsistency in youth. That's a part of why they're inconsistent too. Same reasons, like they got a lot of young, they got a young club, and I feel like they're growing, and you can see it these last, these last few weeks or maybe month that the team has played a lot better so i agree i think like over time they've gotten better and 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 you can see the growth in the players right now so with the pales too so if they continue to do that then maybe they can get that 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 make a push to get that a spot i mean 20 games left i think they're each like four games back three or four games like a range from three to five games I think the the teams that have the best chance are Sacramento and uh, New Orleans. But New Orleans, like yeah, I said, you just gonna do Portland like that? Don't Dame, disrespect Portland. I don't either. think Dame is right, bro. He, got, I mean, you know, he's probably growing, getting treatment right now. He, he probably getting treatment, but he, he didn't look right. Next last game, night. I mean, game. he was back to his second night of back to back, but he didn't look right. Compa- like when he was yeah, on that I'm run, saying he probably ain't a hundred percent. But you know, it's it's play, it's getting about time for playoffs. You know, they need to make that push so. Ain't no real time to really sit out. I think he ain't gonna sit out. But I'm, he I'm, ain't, I'm, I'm gonna go to anybody gonna grab that A spot. I'm still rolling with Portland and Dame to grab it rather than New Orleans and Sacramento. We, we about to find out within the next uh, month or so. So right, we are gonna see. And uh, last thing I want to touch on out west, the Nuggets. They're they're in that third spot, but they lost last night to Cleveland. They're four and five. Their last nine, and. Uh, I'm they they just got fully healthy and I think they're struggling to find that rhythm again. But I also think Michael Porter Jr. is going to be a bona fide superstar. Um, the the potential this kid has is amazing. It's an unfortunate situation because he's on a, a contender and he needs reps and time to develop for his confidence for just you know get a feel for him. But he, you know, when they had injuries, um, he had a great month in January. He was, you know, putting up double doubles, shooting mm-hmm. a high clip from the three. I mean, he's just a naturally gifted scorer. They weren't running much for him, and he he was, you know, getting a lot of stuff in the flow. Yeah. But he he is an unbelievable ISO player. That I think they're gonna need him in the playoffs. But I think they're. I don't know what Mike Malone's gonna do with this rotation. He's gonna have to shorten it here pretty soon. And it's like, who do you leave out? Because you know, Michael Porter Jr. got a DMP uh, the night before against Charlotte. So you know, yeah, you sure. got to decide between him, Tory Craig. Do you want to slide him at the four? That may take minutes away from Millsap or Plumlee coming off the bench. Like, but that's the thing about the Nuggets. I think they one of those teams that they're. Like, I don't think right now nobody's really concerned with who's doing what. They just trying to win, you know, like not so much like playing time or whatever. When the playoffs roll around, who I think, you know, Malone going to go with who he thinks getting the job done at the time between Craig and because Porter's young and still learning, he probably start with Craig and then incorporate the young boy as it, as as the series is start to go on and he build that confidence, that's you know I mean that's what I would do as a coach. Right. But again, but you're right about it's, his it's talent impacted. level. Right. I, it, it, and what he brings to the game. For sure. But like going back to what we said, like with the with the playing time and the rotations right now, I feel like them trying to figure that out is impacting them winning it, games. Yeah, yeah. Because they've dropped a few games. They got smacked at home by the Warriors. They just lost to Cleveland. They almost lost in Charlotte. 
You know what I mean? But then they had a really good win at home against Toronto. So that to me is a sign going back to like inconsistencies and up and down play. I, the only thing I could really point to is them getting healthy and now Mike Malone trying to figure out who do I play. Because at any level, it's like you got guys playing minutes, sporadic minutes. It's hard to catch a rhythm. Yeah. And yeah. you know you know how it is like when teams are running off six, seven, eight wins in a row – the the there's con- usually consistent minutes like and then everybody has a rhythm uh obviously maybe one or two guys is just going bananas but like as a collective group you know you find that rhythm within roles and and, and how you can contribute to win so i think i think uh they're experiencing a little bit of difficulty with that that's the west what about back east the east to me uh the bottom half of it, Philly is just, they're dealing with injuries. Um, mm-hmm. The Pacers have kind of fell off pace. We've seen um, both Bogdan uh, tore his uh, quad, muscle in his quad. Yeah, the yeah. injuries, obviously injury yeah. hurt that. Um, but, uh, you know, Victor Oladipo has been back, but he, he's been kind of inconsistent. uh not his normal self, which kind yeah. of is to be expected. Yeah. He's out of rhythm. The Nets, yeah. I mean, they're below 507. <laughs> Coach is gone now. Kyrie shut down for Don't the really season. Don't know what to expect from them. Right I'm now. not expecting much from them. But the rest of the East is so bad, I think they're going to still make the playoffs. Yeah, because I, I didn't – anything that was like – I got we got all the way down to the eighth spot, ninth spot. Anything less than that was more than five games away. Yeah, so it's – I didn't even – Put no, you know, we don't even got nobody right. chasing for those eight spots. Yeah. Really, I think the Magic, the Nets, Magic will probably stay in those spots. Philly, I tell you what, if they get healthy in the playoffs and stay in the six seed, they're gonna be a mean six. That's seed. Boston, Philly. That right now, it'd be Boston, Philly, first round. That'd be exciting. Ooh, little ball, ball that's a good. Boston. Yeah, that'd be a good. That'd, that'd be a that'd great be series. Exciting. Tough. That'd be a tough first round matchup though. Hey, you see for your Boston. man. Uh, uh, um, what's the young boy from um, from Boston? Tatum. You see, he uh, rounding out his superstar form. Man, and I think to me, I think that is a direct result of Kyrie not being there. I think him and Jalen Brown. Of course, I mean only co- opportunity. You yeah, can't. You but know, he 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 he. When a player like uh, when a star player like Kyrie Leo team, it's it's a whole it's a whole to fill. They had the talent, not players just getting the reps. I mean, not just but we that saw that was just due to like Tatum not even the only one who who put themselves like also what's the other guy, the young boy? Uh, Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown. Yeah. I feel like his his growth is also due to that. But yeah. hold on though. We saw this when he got hurt in the playoffs. No, it was against Cleveland when Bronze last season in Cleveland in the East Conference Finals. Tatum and Brown were unbelievable. They took Brown seven games. Yeah, that was when uh, Kyrie was hurt, wasn't he? Yeah, Kyrie was, Kyrie hurt. was hurt. Yeah, he yeah. was hurt. So, yeah. to me, it's like, okay, we saw that then, and then when Kyrie came back, along with uh, uh, yeah. uh, Gordon Hayward, or, uh, yeah, Gordon Hayward, Hayward. Uh, you know, so they had a lot of pieces to, to try to integrate that next season, and then I think that stunted – Jason Tatum's growth, but kind of going back to what we were talking about, Michael Porter Jr. To me personally, I think if Michael Porter Jr. was in a situation where like he had to play he, like Tatum was, he could do it. I think he'd be better, in my Ooh. opinion. I, I that's just, I'll say that right now. That kid, a, that kid was from you day one a star, a you bro. Said, but it's hard to say that because his pedigree is a number one pick. He got hurt. I okay, but that's what we're talking about. He's always. From he's been injury prone. I mean, so, he had the back injury, and That's he, a, since it was a he's pretty been, serious injury. Yeah, though. but that I'm was, saying since he's been back, he just came back off another yeah, injury. Yeah, he turned prior. his ankle though. It wasn't like a yeah. Okay, it's an injury. He missed games, but it was just a turned ankle. It wasn't nothing like serious. Yeah, but the to back say he can do back. what Tatum done before we seen, I think he'd be better. <laughs> Dude, How do you I, even I, get much better than that? I'm, I'm pointing to I'm pointing to the game they played in Indiana. He dropped 25 and he was hitting clutch buckets down the stretch. And this was when Indiana was 
fully healthy, not Old Depot, but they were, they were, it was tough to win in Indiana. And that was kind of, I was like, you know, I'm sorry, they they run in the same little play. He, he'd come over on an Iverson cut into a ball screen and he'd either get it off the roll or they'd just let him get it in the mid post and he would go to work and they was playing through him. I was like, okay, this kid, yeah, I think he, he got a chance. To, if he don't, if he stay away from injuries, yes, it's no question that he's gonna be yeah, a superstar. He, his and jumper that's gonna, is pure, bro. Like the Nuggets already got a, a great young core. Like when he come into his own, the faster he does that, the more of a threat to the title that they'll be. So yeah, but the good question is, will he get the opportunity to? But yeah, that's what we were. We I were don't talking even about. think that's a question. I think coming in the next season that. You getting DMPs this late in the season? There's a question. Yeah, but you this know, year, like next year, next year we'll see. But this year, I'm not even sure he's gonna crack Mike Malone's playoff rotation. But we got sidetracked. We was talking about Boston. Oh, Tat- yeah. Tat- Tatum is unbelievable. The Jeez. Raptors. I think we got to give a lot of credit to Nick Nurse. Absolutely. And they they got a lot of Absolutely. veteran guys up there, and obviously Siakam coming into his own. And I, I guess on one hand, you know, because. When you think about the Raptors, the Kawhi went there last year, and we thinking like, oh, like they were a good team before Kawhi went there. I ain't saying they were a, they, they were already competing for Eastern the top Conference of the, Finals. Yeah, so they couldn't get past Bron. <laughs> yeah, so I'm saying the fact that they still at the top shouldn't really be that big of a, a surprise. They still got their entire team other yeah. than Kawhi, which Kawhi just really put them over the top to win the title. So. They were still, yeah. They were still team. really a really good team. They for sure, really for sure, team. for sure. But to be honest, let, let's be honest. Without the Bucks, the but it, it, there nobody's beating them. To me, in I the don't. East, I disagree with that. In I a series in the East, I think you that, don't think the Bucks are going to represent yeah. the East. No, I who, think that. I who think do you think will represent the East? I think that if the Bucks, the Raptors, the no pe- people sleep on the Raptors. First of all, they got size. They can go small with with big with big guards. They can put they can put Siakam at the at the four and put uh, uh, Siakam at the five. Like they got long, they got length to guard. Yeah, they got length, but I what 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 do they? They got length. They got Gasol. They Milwaukee got Bopper. They got level, Siakam. Bro. They are I I they are dominate. Like okay, they lost. They lost, they had a couple of losses last. Miami in Miami was surprising. They always dominate the, regular season. What do they do in the chips I mean, on the ground? We've seen it. One, they've made one deep playoff run with uh, Giannis being Giannis, and so okay, now you kind of see like what did he learn from last year, and what I'm seeing in the East as good as I think Toronto is. I don't think Boston has a chance. I don't think Miami has a chance. Philly. They just dis- well actually okay they they lost in Philly one time but the other two games they destroyed them I I just don't see the only team that like you said maybe has a shot okay I'll give you the Raptors but to me it's 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 a long shot it ain't that long they just beat them last year that w- with Kawhi you can't I mean I mean you got you got the claw in the all playoffs. I can That's go little, with is off what I've seen come on man all right so I'm saying this year. I I don't. That's my opinion. I, I don't got. To, we can agree. I don't got the. Cha- I don't got the trophy coming out of t- Toronto, but Toronto are still the, the. So who are you picking out of the East? Toronto. You got to, All right. I got Milwaukee. We are gonna see. I got coming Toronto out. coming out. I got the Bucks. I would being, love to know what the listeners think about this. I got the Bucks being a regular season team, playoff start when they when they face Toronto. With that coaching, with that experience, with with they just came off a championship season. All them players, they, they walk and talk. Yeah, they they walk, but they come ain't. on, dog, they ain't beating the Bucks in seven games. All right, we gonna see though. I would love how much. How, how much you heard people? T- you you remember last year when Lopez was getting off? Brooke, Brooke, in yeah. the in the yeah, killing he, one. Yeah, yeah, he was. You bro. heard anything about him this year? He's playing well. No, he's, he's shooting percent. the ball well. He's protecting the rim. We don't talk about nobody but Giannis. I mean, they, but Middleton's having a good year. Uh, they, they're a well-built team. Now they ain't got the only I other agree. the only other like all-star they have is Chris Middleton. But they're not gonna wow you. So what, what's the difference Giannis, between Toronto and, and they're a and perfectly and built Bucks. team? They're a perfect Toronto. Excuse me, Milwaukee to me is a well-constructed team around their superstar. They complement him well. They surrounded him with shooting. 
uh, and, his, and obviously Giannis' number one strength is getting downhill, getting to the rim, getting fouled or finishing at the rim. But he can also pass. I agree. 30, what, four, 13 or 14 boards, and he's almost six assists. Did you hear what he said about the last game about playing against LeBron in that length? That length, but t- does Toronto have that type yes, of length? Yes, they do. With who? They, they got a Baca Siakam. Similar, they're similar. They're seven feet tall. Okay. So you going to compare the Lakers' length with Anthony Davis, JaVale McGee, and I you throw Bron's really not in there. He was a primary Dwight defender. Dwight didn't play, did he? And Dwight, he, he got in foul trouble. But those three seven-footers, Toronto ain't comparing to that type of Yeah, but protection. the point, what did they do? What were they doing? They going to do this. Toronto going to do the same game plan. Where did the Lakers get the game plan from? Everybody's game plan is the same no. against Milwaukee. If you watched bro, the playoffs last the year. Toronto started that, bro. Yeah, they started, but I'm saying okay, they, but okay, it don't the, if that's the strategy, that's why I said Milwaukee is a, a well constructed team because they surround him with shooting. He had that last year. I'm saying that I'm saying that if you can slow Giannis down, if you slow them down, you like you, Miami did. Like like uh Toronto gonna do. But and who, who took, was go, who was who was his primary defender last year in the in that playoff probably series? Probably Kawhi. Probably or was it Kawhi? It probably was Kawhi. Where Kawhi playing at? He, he he's somewhere in L.A. Right. I so think, I, so I, you don't think that Kawhi in that series had I a huge had impact a, on the defense? I end? think he had an impact. But you keep talking about well built teams. The thing that what I love about Toronto is they got all sleepers, people who are hungry, just. Everybody's sleeping on them because they don't got no superstar. But some kind of way, how many games they even they, back? By? T- they they, they, they got, play well together. I'm not, that's why I say I got to give Nick Nurse credit. I'm not saying you wrong. I'm just saying I think the Bucks are I a think that they, significantly better team. And and if and if both teams are healthy in a seven game series, I feel like it would be extremely difficult for the for the Raptors. But like I said. That's Once why again, it's a debate. Always, that's why it's, that's my opinion. That's you why I always yours, say you know we're talking about one guy. That's no, what I mean. No, one guy. That means he, if he twist, if, if Giannis go on and twist, tweak his toe, he tweak his big toe for a game or two, got to sit out. Same with Siakam. What if Siakam go out and you say, Toronto don't need Siakam to win games. They proven it. That's they true. done it. He was injured. That's they, true. They, 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 that, that's what I'm saying. They don't but have no But in a no playoff superstars. series, though? I'm saying that Toronto don't in have In a playoff s- series, though, against the Bucks, you don't think they would just – I know they they was playing a, a regular season NBA schedule, meaning different teams, different nights. But in a playoff series where you matching up against a healthy Bucks every night, you don't think they need Siakam to yeah, win they four need. games? They need. I, okay. Yeah, I think I think they need. So if he sprains, but I'm saying <laughs> I'm saying that they the in Bucks, trouble. The Bucks, I'm saying that the Bucks can still they'll lose probably the, the, every game from that point forward. I still think yeah, that Toronto course, will compete because yeah, okay. they got they got Ooh, more yeah, size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They 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 don't play throw the ball to Siakam Siakam downhill. No, that ain't even that ain't even their style of play. They play more team oriented where every player eat Lowry, Fleet. Like you you never know who might. Get loose for twenty five or thirty points. Well, we know who's gonna come out on the flip side. I mean, I guess you. So can, you were saying you saying that the I think Raptors will be, be favored in this. No, game? they will not be favored. They ain't gonna be favored because. So that's what I'm saying. So the you groundwork still are, has been done. For but the to, for for you, they're favored. For me, they're my favorite to come out of it, the East. Okay. To well, come out of the East. All right, that's. They. The, the I got the Bucks. Champ, they still gotta go through the defending champions. I got the Bucks. Who had the best record in the league last season? The Bucks, they did, That's and true. the Bucks got the best record now. Who, who gonna? We don't even who, got them to come out of the. Who was the finals MVP? Are they a real contender? Who was title the finals? Contender? Who? Yes, they are. Who was the finals MVP last year? No, I'm talking about your top three. Name your two teams. Three. Name three teams. You well, you probably gonna put them as your third. You don't really think they gonna win the title? I actually do. You I, think the Bucks gonna win the title? I think the Bucks. Oh, okay. You are faking. No, I'm not. I, I could Braun better not hear you say that. Yeah, I mean, I'm I really like oh, they're, the, they're if I'm not mistaken, I think they're the best team on both sides of the ball. The Bucks? Yeah. The Bucks that just but played the Lakers the other day. That that particular game showed that it it it, it moved <laughs> the needle. Lakers. It did a little bit because but Braun has to be Braun, which he he normally is, but if Bron has an off night, because I mean we can go off the, their first meeting, they got smacked. Now that obviously 
uh, Giannis hit like five threes or something like that. If he's hitting five threes, that's how what many I'm saying. games he gonna do that? But we, I mean, he was shooting. Was he shooting like thirty two three percent or something like that? I'm saying, but if he, yeah. uh, but he, he, he's a threat. And if he's hitting like over the course of a series, it's gonna determine like each one of them is gonna have to play at a high level. LeBron plays like he did the other night because he didn't play like that in Milwaukee. Yeah, he did. He didn't play like that in Milwaukee, and the Lakers got blown. smacked. Was they wasn't in the that game. First game. He wasn't. They and so that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know who. I know that my the the only three teams that I think have a legitimate shot at winning are the Bucks, Lakers, and Clippers. Dark horses being out of the West, Dallas, and in the East. Why do Toronto. everybody sleep? Oh, I was going to say. Why you? I just Dallas said dark horse out of the east. Uh, I'm just. I said out of the west. I didn't necessarily say before. Yeah, I know. I did. Because they got to get. I don't think Toronto can get through Milwaukee. But that's what I'm saying. I think the the three teams. It's a three team race right now, in my opinion. You got the the Bucks, Lakers, and Clippers. And depending on how the playoff season shake out, you know, there's there's a couple teams that pose. Uh, that are a tough matchup in the West for the Clippers and, and you know the Lakers, the Lakers got a tougher the Lakers definitely got a tougher job to get there than the Bucks the Bucks and the Raptors it ain't even a question well so are the Clippers because the Clippers and Lakers got to go through each other I mean I the, that's what I mean I meant the Lakers and the Clippers they got the hardest road to for the, sure but the Bucks and the Bucks people think the Bucks gonna walk through the, gonna walk to the Eastern Conference Finals I'm, I'm one of those they sleep. They but sleep. we'll see like I said we're gonna find out no like, way I, I, I I, that's what I think, but mm-mm, mm-mm, ain't had it. We we'll see, we gonna Raptors see, ain't. we gonna see, brother. We gonna see, man. You see, you with the North up there, so. But anyway, my brother, let's. Uh, I think we we call this one a, call this one a wrap, man. Mm-hmm. Episode three. It's, it's been a pleasure as always. Absolutely. And uh, we're gonna try to get the next one out a little sooner than uh, than than this one. Not have such a long gap in between episodes, but. Thank everybody for listening. Appreciate you. And uh, we out. We out of here.